Start the recording and uh, go ahead and get us started uh, here today. Uh, so thank you for joining us. This is our first of two sessions on managing your Google business profile. This is our Google business profile fundamentals uh, session, and this is being brought to you by Visit El Paso. Uh, we, our team here at Miles Partnership has been working with Visit El Paso to uh, help improve the organic representation of the El Paso area uh, on Google. Uh, I am Kim Palmer. I am the Destination Optimization Program Director uh, at Miles Partnership. Uh, we are a strategic marketing company focused exclusively on the travel and tourism industry, uh, and we work with organizations such as uh, Visit El Paso on a wide variety of um, content marketing solutions. Uh, I'm joined by Henry Winkle uh, from our team here, who is our program coordinator. Uh, he is also uh, who you are likely to meet with uh, if you uh, join one of our office hours support calls, and uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But as a part of this program, we do have the ability for you to book some time with our team uh, to either help you through the process of claiming your Google business profile or answering any questions you may have. Uh, about using Google's tools uh, or getting the most out of uh, that platform. Uh, our organization uh, has been working with Google in a variety of ways for quite some time, uh, both through paid media, but also as a trusted Google Street View provider uh, and a trainer through the Grow with Google program. Um, the destination optimization program, which Visit El Paso is participating in, uh, is a effort we do with uh, DMOs, destination marketing organizations, to help them better understand and optimize what their destination looks like on the Google platform. Uh, Miles has worked with over 270 destinations, large and small, all over the country, and even in the South Pacific on this program. Uh, where we start is always by doing an audit of all of the businesses in the travel and tourism space in the community to see how they are performing on the Google platform, whether their locations have been claimed, whether they are complete, uh, and we report that back to the disc to the DMO. Uh, in doing that, we've evaluated over 150,000 business profiles in the last uh, four or five years uh, and have provided training sessions such as this series with Visit El Paso to more than 8,000 businesses around the country. Uh, so all that is to say, uh, don't just take my word for it. Uh, our fundamentals in maximizing exposure on Google uh, presentations are based on our hands-on experience with uh, how the top performing businesses on Google uh, are utilizing the tools that are available. Um, as I, I mentioned at the beginning here, we also have something called office hours uh, as a part of this program. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this link uh, in the chat. Um, this is a link to a Calendly uh, that will allow you to book a 15, 20 minute Zoom call uh, with our, our team uh, to help you claim your Google business profile or answer other questions that you may have. Uh, I wanna call out that this service is absolutely free. Uh, Miles Partnership has no products or services to sell uh, to individual businesses. Uh, this is, uh, brought to you by Visit El Paso, uh, and we're really uh, here to help you uh, absolutely free of uh, any strings attached. Uh, so there are four things we are going to cover in today's session. Today is the uh, first of two sessions. This is our fundamentals of Google business profiles. Uh, next week, we have a second session on maximizing your exposure, um, where we will cover uh, more detailed tools uh, that are available uh, for your business on Google. Uh, but today we are going to cover first and foremost why this is important to your business, what's new in the Google business profile space, 
uh, and five fundamentals for you to get started with your Google business profile. Uh, we also have uh, another set of free tools uh, in addition to office hours uh, available for your business, including the Local Tourism Marketing Academy, which is an online resource uh, for you to explore a variety of digital marketing topics uh, beyond the Google platform, things like social media, content marketing, email marketing, et cetera. Uh, we'll definitely have time for questions uh, when we're done, as I mentioned. Uh, please feel free to use the question and answer uh, feature uh, in Zoom uh, for any questions you have as we go. So let's begin with the big picture. Why is your Google business profile uh, important to your business? Well, at the end of the day, uh, your business profile on Google is most likely the single most significant source of organic exposure for your business online. And by ex organic exposure, we mean non-paid, uh, not digital advertising, uh, but what uh, you are, uh, your visibility on an unpaid basis. Uh, let's talk. start by uh, defining what a Google business profile is. Um, a Google business profile is everything that uh, Google knows about your location, and it's consolidated really into one card. Um, if you are in uh, the search engine results page, uh, which us SEO geeks call a SERP, S-E-R-P, uh, you will find uh, a business profile on the right-hand side of the screen in what's called the knowledge panel space uh, and on mobile, uh, usually front and center when we are looking at uh, having searched for a particular business. Now, a business profile is the same core information about your business that uh, publishes across all of Google's products. Uh, and that means that it is the core source of visibility for your business on Google. Uh, so it doesn't matter if your potential customer uh, is using Google Maps on their phone or at home, if they're doing a, a search, uh, even if they're doing a voice search on a Google Assistant, if they are researching uh, your hours of operation uh, or looking for your address or your website, um, that they are going to encounter your Google business profile. And that profile is the same across all of these Google products, uh, including the ones that are specific to the travel and tourism space. Uh, Google has uh, what's called Google Travel. Um, most of you will never go to google.com slash travel, but if you do a search for things to do in a market or places to stay, uh, you're going to get a call out from Google of top attractions, top hotels, vacation rentals, et cetera. All of those modules are part of the Google Travel uh, ecosystem and are more opportunities for your business to be found. In fact, Google reports that local search is delivering over 4 billion, with a B, uh, direct connections between businesses and their customers every single month. Uh, in the travel and tourism space, Focus Rights research found that more than 90% of travelers are using Google at some point in their trip planning process. Uh, honestly, I would wager that that number is even higher than 90%. If you think about your own travel planning behavior, uh, none of us really go down a neat, tidy funnel from awareness to engaging with the business. We're doing a lot of research online. We're using a lot of different planning platforms, but almost all of those interactions um, with any other uh, website or platform tends to start from a search. And so when someone is starting from search and finding your business, your Google business profile is likely the first thing a potential customer is going to see about your business. Not your website, not your Facebook page. Your first impression is most likely your Google business profile. 
And so the reason Visit El, pa El Paso uh, and our team are uh, doing these trainings for the businesses in the community is we want as many businesses in the community to put their best foot forward with their Google business profile because it will ultimately help with the success of their individual business, but it also benefits our visitors by providing them with more complete and compelling information, which ultimately benefits El Paso as a whole. Now, this is some research done by an organization called Bright Local. And every year since 2013, they have evaluated uh, the signals uh, that Google's algorithms are using to choose what surfaces in what's called the local pack. Uh, and you can see since 2013, the top signal has always been uh, GBP signals, Google Business Profile signals. Um, however, the influence of uh, Google Business Profiles has grown from being probably around 23% back in 2013 to now being 36%, so more than a third of the influence of what local businesses are showing up in search results has to do with the completeness and quality of their Google business profile. Uh, in fact, Google's research found that complete and up-to-date Google business profiles are almost three times more likely to be considered reputable by a potential customer, 70% more likely to attract location visits and 50% more likely to lead to a purchase. So that's all great news for our businesses. Uh, we all know that uh, reputation is the make or break of what brings businesses into our, um, into our door. So when we are talking about local search, uh, the typical search result we see on Google is called the local pack. Uh, for us SEO, our search engine optimization nerds, uh, again, the local pack is where Google gives us three or four business listings as well as a map uh, for a community. Now, the local pack is generated when a consumer searches for a keyword, uh, typically a type of business, uh, and a location. And one of the questions we get asked most frequently uh, by businesses is how, how do I get my business to be one of the ones that shows in, a local, in the local path for a particular search? Well, the answer is that there are three primary factors at play uh, within Google's algorithms for determining uh, what businesses are showing in the local path. Uh, those three uh, factors are distance, relevance, and prominence. Now, distance is one that we don't have any control over. The Google is looking at either the location of the device uh, that uh, has done the search. So if it's on mobile, uh, it is going to look out from uh, near me on that device. Uh, or if I've put in the name of a city or county or a state, uh, Google is going to put sort of drop a pin in the um, what they consider the geographic center of that location and go outwards from there. Um, the idea being that businesses that are closer to that center um, are going to have the benefit of distance. Um, at the end of the day, that is a factor that is completely out of our control as business owners. Um, so all we can really do is set it aside, but be aware of the fact that that is one of the influencers and in what's showing up in the local pack. The other two factors are relevance and prominence. How well do we match what the consumer is searching for? Uh, and how good is the reputation of our business online? Uh, in today's session, we're going to talk about several different ways that you can improve your relevance. And in our maximizing exposure session next week, we will talk about influencing prominence. 
So at the end of the day, why we are here is because we really want to help you maximize your exposure and engagement uh, through your Google business profile. It's going to benefit your business, our visitors, and El Paso as a whole. Next, I want to call out a couple uh, new things that are happening with Google business profiles uh, that is important for everyone to be aware of, particularly if you have already previously been managing your Google business profile online. The first is that Google changed the name. Uh, for many years, uh, this was referred to as Google My Business. Uh, and people talked about their GMB listing or their Google My Business page. Uh, Google has changed the name of this to Google Business Profile. Uh, it's really not significant other than I find it kind of a mouthful to say uh, compared to Google My Business. And I have to get used to saying GBP instead of GMB. Uh, but the more significant change was that Google has discontinued the Google My Business app. Um, the app was removed from uh, app stores in July of this year, so just recently, and they're no longer supporting uh, that platform. Um, this is because they are pushing uh, businesses to use one of two ways to manage their Google business profile that are ultimately supposed to be faster and easier than having to use a standalone app to manage your listing. Um, so that app is now no longer available. Uh, if you have it on your phone and you've tried to use it recently, you'll notice that you'll be redirected to one of the two new ways to manage your business profile online. Um, those two new editing options are either to edit the profile directly in the search engine results page, what we call the SERP, uh, or in the Google Maps app, which is probably the most uh, aligned with um, the experience of using uh, the Google My Business app tool. Uh, I will point out that we have found that there are some differences uh, in the features that you can access in search engine results pages versus the Google Maps app, uh, particularly related to things like menus. Uh, so if you want the most robust uh, amount of features, I, I would recommend using the search engine results page editing tool. Now, if you go into uh, manage your Google business profile, uh, you're going to uh, get this notification from Google, uh, letting you know that managing individual business profiles is moving to search and maps. Uh, there's a button uh, for staying, uh, staying here, i.e. staying at the business.google.com uh, current profile manager tool, uh, or you can click on manage on search. I will call out that what we have found is that once you click on manage on search, uh, you can't go back uh, to using the business.google.com uh, tool. Um, so this is what uh, editing your profile in the search engine results page looks like. Uh, what you want to do is be logged into Google with the account that has management control of the business profile. Uh, you'll see that uh, this dialogue here that says your business on Google. Uh, it's going to have a series of cards with recommendations of things to do and engage with, um, as well as buttons to edit your profile, uh, promote your listing, and engage with consumers. We zoom in a little bit here, make it a little bit easier to see. Um, you can see the variety of cards uh, encouraging you to create offers, use posts, things like that. Um, but we can also click through into our business information, uh, update our hours, our location, contact information, uh, et cetera. The other way we have available to manage our Google business profile is using the Google Maps app on your phone. Um, so if you have the Maps app on your phone, again, you do need to be logged into the account that has management uh, access for, um, for your Google business profile. Uh, you want to click on your icon in the upper right here, whether it's just a letter or a photo that you're using. 
uh, and you'll see in the drop down menu your business profiles. If you click on this, uh, it will show you if you have multiple business profiles, it will list them here. Or if you have a single business profile, you can just uh, select it and click it here. When you do, uh, you're going to be taken to your business listing uh, in Google Maps. Uh, and you'll see similar tools to what we saw on the search engine results page integrated into that listing. So our edit profile button, promote customers, et cetera. Uh, the interesting thing with the app is that some of the tools are actually integrated directly into your listing. Uh, so if you're utilizing updates to post events and special offers, uh, if you go into the updates tab, you're going to see the buttons uh, to add an offer or an event uh, right there in the listing. Uh, we will talk about posts in our maximizing exposure session uh, next week. Uh, also, if you're looking at your reviews on um, it within your listing here, you'll see that the reply button is integrated directly into the review if you're using the Google Maps um, app. Now, the desktop profile uh, manager at business.google.com has not gone away. Uh, and Google has indicated that it will continue to exist, but their intention is that this platform will be used by agencies or for uh, folks that have a multi-business uh, account. So uh, who are either managing multiple locations of the same business or who manage multiple businesses at one time. Uh, and that's going to be kind of the stated purpose for the desktop. Uh, profile manager that you may have been used uh, previously. Uh, we did have a question come in about whether there can be more than one person that can log in and manage the profile. Uh, yes, you can. Uh, in the settings, <coughs> excuse me, uh, two ways to do that. Um, either in the settings, uh, you'll see the uh, user manager. Uh, and you can set multiple managers uh, for the location. Um, and in that case, uh, any of the managers who log in with their account will be able to access these tools. Uh, the other way to do it is if you have claimed your listing with a generic email address like info at mybusiness.com, uh, any, anyone on their device can log into that uh, Google account and they would have access to those tools. Um, so two different ways uh, to approach that. Uh, next, I wanna go through our five fundamentals for getting started with your Google business profile. Our first step is to claim your business listing. Uh, Claiming it is uh, actually a two-step process where we claim the listing and then we verify ownership. So while we call it, uh, you, you hear people uh, call it claiming and verifying uh, interchangeably, it's actually both. It's a two-step process where we claim the listing and then verify our ownership of it. Uh, the first thing you need to do is start with a Google account. Um, that you want to be the one to have ownership of that listing. Uh, if you don't have a Google account, you can go to accounts.google.com uh, and either create a Gmail account or if you have a email address uh, in the domain of your business, you can register it as a Google account. Uh, I would really generally recommend that you claim your business listing with a general account of some sort, um, like a, an admin or an info uh, account, uh, not an individual's personal account. One of the problems we see small businesses encounter frequently is that Bob claimed the business profile two or three years ago and Bob is no longer with the company and access to the Google business profile left with his Gmail account. So we wanna avoid that. We wanna think ahead and avoid that happening with who um, has claimed uh, the account. So once you have that account, your first step is to sign into Google um, so that you are logged into that uh, account. Um, 
Next, uh, you want to use Google Maps is where I recommend uh, performing the process of claiming your listing. You can access this through search results, uh, but it's much easier to tell whether a business listing has been claimed by looking at it in Google Maps. So you wanna search uh, for your business uh, using Google Maps. Um, and if you see this little icon with a check mark and a shield um, that says claim this business, uh, this is the, uh, this indicates that the business owner has not yet claimed that business profile. Um, and so this is what you want to click on to initiate the process of claiming this business. If you do not see this, then the business location has already been claimed. Um, so we click on this to begin the process. <clears throat> Um, the next step, uh, you will be taken to a screen that says manage now. Um, and that is the next click that we make before we, um, that then uh, sort of raises your hand with Google and says that I am claiming uh, ownership of this location with this account. The next step in the process is the actual verification. Uh, this is a security uh, check to make sure that they are not handing out access to a business to just anybody, um, that they are addressing someone who really is a rightful representative of that business. Um, so they have two ways, two primary ways with which you can prove that you are the rightful representative of the business. Um, and they are by postcard or by phone. Um, after you uh, get into the step of the process, you will be given uh, a couple of, given these options to choose from. Um, you may only see one or the other, um, but recently we have been seeing uh, both postcard and phone uh, be the primary options made available to businesses. Uh, if you're going to verify by phone, Google is going to call the number that is listed on the listing currently. So the first uh, question is making sure uh, that that phone number uh, is the phone number that uh, is the location for the business that uh, you need. Uh, if it is not, you should before uh, probably a week or more before uh, engaging with this process, suggest an edit to the listing to change to update that phone number um, because Google will robocall uh, the number listed in the business profile. Uh, it needs to be picked up by somebody. So if you have a uh, auto answer or you know push one for the operator uh, set up on your business phone, uh, phone verification is not going to work for you um, because that robo call is going to immediately announce the verification code that you need for the listing. Uh, the other option is to verify your location uh, by a postcard in the mail. I know it sounds antiquated, but that is still uh, one of the primary ways that Google does this. Uh, a postcard can take up to five days or more to arrive and will be sent to the address, the physical address for the location that is included in the business profile. Uh, postcards will not send to a PO box. Uh, so if your address uh, is a PO box, uh, you technically cannot claim a Google business profile with a PO box, um, but you will not be able to receive that postcard. Uh, when you do receive the postcard, uh, there will be a five-digit code on it. Uh, you come back uh, to this uh, screen here and enter uh, that uh, code uh, and click on that to complete uh, the process of verification. If you are in a situation where neither of those options uh, will work for you, uh, the next step is to reach out to Google support uh, from uh, this screen uh, by clicking on more options. 
Um, we have found that Google has started doing video verification with some businesses where they get on sort of the equivalent of a Zoom call with you and want you to show them, you know, your sign, your cash register, like basically show them uh, your business and that uh, it exists. Um, we have not seen uh, instances of that being provided as a primary option out of the gate, uh, but we may see more of that uh, in the future. So once you enter that five digit code, uh, you are uh, verified. Uh, you are now going to be able to use Google's tools uh, in order to manage uh, that business. Uh, so once you're in there, uh, here are a few pointers of where to start with updating your Google business profile. First and foremost, uh, take a look at your hours. Hours are the most frequently searched piece of information on Google. Uh, think about your own behavior. When you're looking at a business on Google, is it what time does it close tonight? Is it open tomorrow? Are some of the most frequently searched things. Uh, and Google's own research shows, has shown a 300% increase in searches for open now in the last couple of years or open now near me. Uh, in order for you to show up in search results for open now and open now near me, you're going to have to have uh, accurate hours information in that listing. Another recent change in Google business profiles is this little note underneath hours that indicates when the hours were last updated by the business owner. Now, this is one of those little, little uh, pushes in customer confidence that can help bring customers through your door. Um, depending on when you've updated your hours, it will say how many days, weeks, months, or even hours ago. Uh, the hours were updated by the business. As you can imagine, the further out that is, the lower the trust is going to be with the customer. And the more recently hours have been updated, the more you're going to inspire co confidence uh, and bring folks into your business. Um, so that leads to a little bit of a pro tip here. Even if your hours haven't changed recently, it's good to go in there and maybe just change your change an opening hour, save it and change it back um, because uh, engaging with the hours and, and saving something like that will trigger this little note to say that the hours have been uh, touched by the business recently. And so you'll get this little note in your listing that your hours are current. Now, there are actually three ways for us to edit hours in our Google business profile. Uh, if we're using the search engine results page uh, manager uh, or the, uh, the app manager, uh, the Maps app, uh, you want to look for the edit profile button. If we click on the edit profile button. Um, one of the options here is going to be uh, business information or hours. Uh, within business information is the hours tab. The first section in here is the traditional uh, seven days a week operating hours uh, interface where you can set your open and closed hours uh, for each of the days of the week. Uh, do keep this in mind if you are the type of business that adjusts your regular working hours seasonally to make sure that at the point that you are adjusting your seasonal hours, you have updated it on Google as well. Uh, during the pandemic, Google also released something called detailed hours. Uh, this grew out of the need to know when delivery and pickup or drive throughs were available in restaurants, uh, but also includes uh, things like access and online services. So this is particularly relevant to the restaurant industry. Uh, but you're able to go in here and set your happy hour or if you have special hours for seniors uh, on, on specific days of the week, you can uh, enter a beginning and end hours for those specific services in addition to your regular operating hours. Third option uh, comes out of uh, holidays uh, and you may notice that you're getting emails from Google pretty much every month 
uh, reminding you to let customer know, customers know about your holiday hours. Uh, now, don't ignore uh, these emails because uh, even if your holiday hours are the same as they are on other days, you should go in here and update your holiday hours. Um, so within holiday hours, we can uh, pick a particular date and put in our operating hours for that date. But uh, the real impact is what you see here in uh, the, the little note that goes under your hours on, on a holiday. If you go in and update your hours for the specific holiday, even if they're the same as your regular operating hours, you're going, your customers are going to see in green uh, uh, Christmas Eve hours, or it may say hours verified by the business, um, but it gives a positive indication that these hours have been confirmed by you. If you don't do this, if you just let it be, uh, your customers are going to see this orange highlight on the on the holiday that says, hey, just letting you know, Christmas Eve might affect these hours. So that just creates a little bit of doubt in our potential customers, which could be the difference of, um, of whether they roll the dice to come to your business. Um, this is also a great tool for addressing other special circumstances that could impact your hours. Uh, if there is a weather event uh, and you need to be closed uh, for several days uh, or you are opening late uh, or closing early uh, for, uh, for some reason, uh, you can go in and set uh, hours for individual dates using this tool. You can do it for 365 days out of the year if you want to. Um, but this uh, really allows you to let folks know what's going on there. Uh, next, I want to talk about categories um, because uh, adding uh, additional relevant categories to your business can significantly expand uh, where your business shows up in search results because it's going to match with more searches. Now, you have to have a primary category in order to have a business listing, but by expanding our categories, we can expand our relevance uh, to customer searches. So uh, these next two items are really where the relevance piece uh, of uh, the, the factors in local search results come into play. Um, because uh, the more categories you are in, uh, the more opportunity you have to show up uh, in the local path. Uh, now, you don't get to choose your own categories. Uh, there are 4,000 uh, set categories available from Google. Uh, so chances are you're going to be able to find uh, more than one thing that applies to the products and services that your business provides. Uh, you just can't make them up. If you can sort of imagine if Google let everyone on the world make up their own categories, what an absolute mess of a database that would become. Uh, but they are evaluated every year. We see a, around 30 come and go on an annual basis. Uh, and there's a great deal of variety in here. One of them is cat hostel, which I, I didn't know cats needed a hostel, um, but it's in there as a category. So there's a very good chance uh, that there is more than one category that applies to your business. Uh, in order to edit our categories, we wanna go into edit profile and business information. Uh, where we can select uh, our business category by clicking on this little uh, pencil icon uh, next to our category. Um, you are able to have up to nine additional categories for your business. So you can have 10 in total. And so how this plays out is, let's just say I'm a fine dining restaurant, but I may also be a seafood restaurant. I may be a steak restaurant. I may be an organic restaurant. All of those are applicable uh, categories for me. Um, so by adding each of those categories to my profile, it's now more likely that I'm going to show up in a customer search for seafood restaurant if I have made that one of the categories for my business. Now, our categories also go hand in hand with attributes. 
um, different business categories have different attributes available for businesses to choose from. Uh, so one of the benefits of having a variety of categories is that you may also expand the attributes uh, you can uh, use. Attributes are another way that we inspire confidence uh, in our potential customers with additional detail. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, dine-in, takeout, and delivery were added front and center to the top of dining listings uh, to make it very clear which businesses offered those services. There are also still health and safety uh, features uh, called out uh, in business listings. Um, and there are also uh, characteristic attributes such as women-led, uh, Black-owned, veteran-led, et cetera, that business can identify themselves uh, as well. Uh, again, the more attributes we utilize, uh, the more uh, likely we are to uh, align with customer searches. Uh, to edit our attributes, uh, we want to be in business information under edit profile and click on more. Uh, and you're going to see a variety of categories of attributes that you can edit, things like accessibility, amenities, et cetera. Again, what you have access to will depend, uh, vary by what business type you are. Uh, the other thing I want to call out is uh, when you select attributes, uh, you can select them as a yes or a no. And sometimes it's just as important to tell our potential customers what we don't have or what we don't allow uh, as it is to tell them what we do. In, in the absence of information, um, people will often assume that maybe you do have something. We can avoid uh, customer service issues by being upfront about things like, let's say, pets welcome. Uh, if you are not a facility that allows uh, pets, then by setting your attribute up front saying this is not a pet friendly location, you're going to avoid uh, having to have those conversations with uh, potential customers who have tried to bring their pet. On the other hand, uh, if you are pet friendly and you select pet friendly in your attributes, uh, you are much more likely to come uh, up in search results for someone who searches pet-friendly restaurants near me. Now, in our next session on maximizing exposure, we're going to talk about photography and photography best practices in more detail. Um, but I do want to call out as when we first start our Google business profile to make sure that we are uploading some good quality photos of our property. Uh, photos are really a key part of how pot potential customers make decisions about businesses. Uh, so having quality photography in there will increase the likelihood of customer engagement with your profile. Um, but uh, we've also found that uploading new photos on a regular basis can help improve your visibility. Uh, one of the things I see businesses do on a regular basis is take the five or six best photos they have of their location, upload it to their Google business profile, and two years later, they have never uh, uploaded another photo. Uh, and your customers really want to see what the experience looks like uh, now and today. Uh, so uh, under edit profile, uh, there's a section for photos. Uh, if you click on that, you will be able to either drag or choose a photo from your device uh, to upload uh, to your profile. Um, and so that is also a great way to improve engagement and exposure uh, for your business. Uh, so those are our fundamentals when you're first getting started with your Google business profile. Uh, first, you need to start with claiming and verifying your business. Uh, ours are probably the most critical content within your listing. Uh, if we are diligent in selecting our categories and attributes, we are going to match to more customer searches as well as inspire confidence about the products and services that we do provide. Uh, and uh, definitely start out by including some great photography 
uh, but also getting into the habit of adding, uh, even if it's just one photo, uh, new photo every week. I'm going to wrap up today by um, giving you an overview of the Local Tourism Marketing Academy. Uh, this is another free resource brought to you by Visit El Paso uh, and the Texas Travel Alliance, uh, who is uh, the alliance partner behind this program. Um, the Marketing Academy uh, is located at T uh, tta.tourismbusinessmarketing.com. Uh, and uh, Henry just dropped that link uh, into our chat there. Uh, you do have to use a Google account to log in uh, to the Academy uh, and you will be asked for an access code. Uh, the access code is El Paso 22. Uh, and once you log into that, you will have um, access to um, the tools available in the Academy, which is a great deal of content. There are actually more than 60 articles uh, about digital marketing included in the Academy, and they expand well beyond Google. Uh, things like social media, SEO, Google Analytics are all covered uh, in the Academy. Uh, you can also earn badges as you uh, engage with the content on the site. Uh, if you mark an article as complete uh, after you've uh, used it, uh, you'll kind of rank up from, from rookie to expert uh, in your digital marketing skills. Uh, there is also an ask a question feature available in the Academy. Uh, these questions do go directly to our team here at uh, Miles Partnership, uh, and we will answer your questions. Uh, this is also where you can suggest any content topics you would like to see added to the Academy. Uh, and again, I just wanted to call out that we do have absolutely free uh, office hours available with our team. Uh, if you would like one-on-one -on -one help with claiming your Google business profile uh, or have any questions or challenges you would like us to help you with, uh, we look forward uh, to the opportunity uh, to help you. Um, so we uh, have a few minutes left uh, here. Uh, just wanted to open up the floor for uh, any other questions uh, that you might have uh, out of today's fundamentals presentation? Um, yes, uh, let me put that link uh, in the chat to everyone. There we go. And the code is El Paso 22 for the access code. All right, uh, we will also, again, we have recorded this session uh, for others to engage with it. Uh, we will be sending uh, a follow-up that includes links to these resources uh, as well. Um, I, I believe they will be distributed uh, by the folks at Visit uh, El Paso in follow-up to uh, to this, we will be sharing that recording with the Visit El Paso team um, for their use. Um, so again, thank you everyone for joining us today and thank you to Visit El Paso for bringing this education opportunity to the community. Have a great rest of your day.